Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming along to our little presentation. Um, I think we've got quite a few in this morning, which is quite nice. And we've got a few, I know we've got a mix of people all over the, from all over the country. Um, and we've got some of you who I think are already using uh, learning journals as a trial. I mean, and maybe some who are actually progressed onto a full account as well and are looking just for some tips and some tricks. So what we're going to do this morning is take you through the basics of the system. Um, answer any questions that you've got, show you some things you might not have realised and maybe hint at a few things that are upcoming um, as well. Looking for this to take uh, around about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. I know everyone is very busy. If we do overrun a little bit, that's fine. Um, if I don't manage to answer everybody's questions, I can um, get back to you all by email. Hopefully you've all got my contact details anyway, but I'll provide them too. Um, I've actually also, uh, I'll talk about this in a little bit as well, but we've also got another session running starting at 11 o'clock, which is going to be dedicated to reports. Um, so if you're interested in that, I'll, send, I'll, I'll provide those details um, in this session in just a little bit. But let's get started. So you should be able to, um, in just a second. So what you should be seeing in just a second is Learn Journal's website, which hopefully you're all familiar with. Um, for those of you who don't know where Learning Journals came from, um, it's actually from a nursery in Edinburgh. Uh, we noticed some time ago that it was taking staff there a long time to complete observations. So just for ourselves, we decided to build this system and very quickly it got recognised locally as something that could be useful elsewhere. And it's kind of grown now. Um, over the last couple of years, we've got over 500 nurseries up and down the country using the system um, and growing all the time. Um, for those of you who have never seen it before, this is uh, this is basically your system here. So what I've done, I've got a demonstration account here, which I have set up um, just like a uh, typical private nursery. So we've got a baby room, a toddler room and a preschool room. Now, this can be completely customized. You can have as many rooms as you want. You can name them anything you want. And these pictures can be anything that you want as well. Um, if you do have any questions, by the way, as we're going through this, you should have a little chat box somewhere where you can type in your questions. So just do that and I will get to them as soon as I can. Um, hello, Louise, who has said hi already. <laughs> um, so these rooms, the purpose of these is really just to organize the children's profiles. So if I was to click into the preschool room now, we'll get to see all the children that are in our preschool room. So here we have our few children. This is just a demonstration account. So they're, they're not real children here. Um, and what you've got is some basic information on each one. And what these are representing are those A4 ring binders, those horrible, uh, cumbersome and um, space consuming items that you probably have in your nursery at the moment if you're using paper profiling. So we can click on to any one of these and I'm going to click into Amy here and we can see uh, this child's profile. Now, I think we've got a predominantly Scottish audience this, this morning, so I'm going to use Amy who's on the Curriculum for Excellence, but uh, for those of you following the EYFS, please uh, don't, uh, don't worry, this is exactly the same, everything looks exactly the same for the EYFS as it does um, for the Curriculum for Excellence, and it all behaves exactly the same way. So for the Curriculum for Excellence, where we have our curricular areas up the top, you would have your 18, uh, I think 17 or 18 curricular areas there. So. Um, what we've got is all our observations stacked from the newest to the oldest and they go from top to bottom. We can scroll down and see all this child's observations right here. Each observation has got the date the observation was taken. It's got the curricular area that this particular observation applies to. It's got the description, which is written in by the staff member. It's got evidence as well. So here we've just got photographic evidence, but we do have the option to allow you to upload videos as well. We've got an, a section for next steps as well. So every observation can have a next step attached to that so that you can uh, help to set goals for this child. And then we've also got a section for um, comments. Now comments can be left by parents, by staff. And in our nursery, we actually help the children to leave their own comments uh, just by typing it in for them. Obviously they can't type it in themselves. So we type that in for them. Um, each observation is uh, also rated and tracked. So if I click on this tab, we've got our learning outcomes and progression pathways. 
and we can see the different experiences and outcomes that have been attached to this particular observation. Uh, obviously, in the UIFS, your outcomes are slightly different and they're broken down into your age ranges. And instead of progression pathways, you've got the characteristics for effective learning. Now, it's important to mention that this looks exactly the same on a tablet as it does on the screen you're looking at it on at the moment. Um, it was designed to be used on tablets because obviously they're very portable, they're very handy. Um, you can take pictures straight away without having to get your digital camera out. Um, so it looks exactly the same as it does on there. Now, if we imagine Amy is doing something that we want to observe, to take an observation, all we do is simply click add observation. Throughout the system, what we've tried to make it um, do is make it as simple as it possibly can be. I know there's a lot of different and varying levels of competency with technology out there. Um, and we want to make sure that this is easy as possible to use. And we think it is. So all you've got to do really now is follow instructions. So you're asked to select the learning outcome type. <coughs> and here we have the curricular areas. If this child was following the UIFS, you would have the 17 curricular areas here. So for example, uh, PSED, uh, yeah, you know them. Um, so we choose whichever one applies to what we're seeing here. And then we simply describe the observation. Again, another important note, make sure your observation is uh, obviously um, well written. It's evaluative, descriptive, and uh, it accurately reflects what you're seeing this child do. Um, the system will only help you take observations uh, as good as you're able to write them. So bear that in mind. Now, having said all that, I'm going to put in something very basic here and just say that Amy was learning to count to 10. Now, you would never have something as simple as that, but for the purposes of this, it will do. Once you've got your description, you're then able to move on to the next steps section. So uh, you can set a goal based on what you've just seen in this um, section here. And next steps can actually be tracked. So we have a next steps tracker, um, which I will come back to in a little while. But not every observation needs a next step and not every next step needs to be tracked. So this section here is optional. Um, we've then got the date and time that activity is taking place. So this is obviously today's date and time. But if it was something that happened yesterday or the week before, you can just click on this box and you can change the date to, to suit whenever it actually happened. So I'll keep it on the 27th of April here. That's today. Uh, then <coughs> we upload a photo. And this is where you'll see a huge time saving if you're still using paper profiling. Because on a tablet, when you click this upload photo button, it will um, ask you if you want to use the tablet's camera or if you want to take an existing uh, a photograph that you've already taken. So instead of having to get your digital camera and connect it to the computer and download the picture and cut it out and stick it in and find the glue and all that sort of stuff, you just simply have to click a couple of buttons, take your pictures, and there you go. Now I've got a couple of pictures um, prepared here, so I'm going to use this counting one. Uh, it's really very simple. So I've got a couple of number blocks there. Obviously, this would normally be the child that you feature in here. And I'm going to pick one more, and this numbers here. And uh, we've got these number blocks. There we go. So we've got our evidence. As I say, you can upload uh, videos also if you want to. That's another option. Um, so once you've got your evidence and your description and your next steps, move, move on to the next stage. And this is where we connect it back to the curriculum. So here, what you'll see are the different experiences and outcomes from the curriculum. So uh, we're in the numeracy and math section here, and here are all the different experiences and outcomes for this part. And we just choose whichever one applies to um, our observation. And you can have as many of these as you want, because quite often an observation will, will um, go across different curricular areas and many, many different experiences and outcomes. I'm just gonna pick one at random here. I'll pick this patterns and relationships. But if you want to go, so we're in numeracy and maths, but say this also included a social activity, uh, we could go into social studies and we could again choose one of these or two of these, in fact. Now you'll see there's some numbers down here. We've got a one there and a one there and a zero here. What this is telling us is that this child has had one observation linked to this statement already. If I go back to numeracy and maths, you'll see we've had four observations here linked to this particular statement. And what this does is it helps you to see at a glance which parts of the curriculum have not been observed for this particular child or where they may have uh, an excess of observations in a particular area. 
Um, so that can, and, and the staff members will get to know this as they work through the children, they'll get to become familiar with which areas each child is working towards. Um, now, if we skip back the top, up the top here, I've got the observate the sorry the statements that we've chosen to attach to this particular observation. And before we move on, we're asked to rate the child's understanding of what they've just done. By default, it will say red, amber, green. But in your settings, you can change this language. You can have it as developing, consolidating, secure, emerging, expected, exceeding, all these sorts of things. And it's important also to note that this. Um, these ratings are actually not shown to the parents. Um, so if you're worried about that, bear in mind that parents don't get to see this. You can certainly choose to share it with them, um, but by default, parents won't be able to see the ratings that you've um, you've applied. Um, so make your choices and then move on to the next stage. Now for this particular child in this curriculum, um, the next stage is the progression pathways, which are um, I can statements. This might look different depending on which part of the country you're in because there are many different um, variations of this throughout the country. One of the good things about our system is that we are so flexible and we're able to make changes to individual curricula, um, you know, depending on the needs of that particular local authority. So I'm not actually going to choose anything here. This section is optional, but you can see it would work in exactly the same way. You just choose your statement and attach it to this particular observation. In England, this would be the characteristics for effective learning. So we move on to the next stage, and this is the final stage. And this is about connecting it to previous next steps. So if you remember back in our first step there, we could have attached a next step or created a next step and chosen to track it. Any tracked next step will appear uh, in this section down here. So as you can see, we've got two next steps for this child. So we've got our next step of how to learn to how to hold a pen properly and to teach Amy other uh, basic first aid skills and what the system is asking is does this observation contribute so does the observation that we're doing Amy was learning to count to 10 does it contribute towards a goal of any of these next steps or even complete it and if it does you can connect them with these buttons here um, so what I've said here is that uh, Amy counting to 10 is contributing towards her next step of teaching her basic first aid skills now obviously that doesn't happen so I can remove that with this button here if I want to, I can choose to say that this next step has now been completed because if you think about it, a next step is never usually just identified then achieved. It will have several steps in between. So you can create these milestones by leaving this box unchecked and then we can have several observations that will go towards completing that particular next step. So I'm going to remove this one here. So let's say this observation currently does not complete any next steps and that's fine. Um, Next, we can choose whether we want to publish the observation, save it for later or delete it. If you publish the observation and if you have parents set up on the system, they would be able to see the observation that you've just published. So don't publish anything that you're not ready for the parent to see. If you want to, you can save it for later. Um, but even if it has been published, you can go back and you can um, amend it. At all. Uh, you can change your description, change photographs, whatever you want to do. So even if it's published, it's not set in stone. A really handy feature that I know everybody will be very interested in is publish this observation for other children. This is for when you're doing a group activity, when there's more than one child involved, and when you don't want to have to copy and paste the same information out to multiple children's profiles. You just simply tick this box, click on the finish button, then the system will ask you who is involved in this particular activity. So we're showing all the children in Amy's class here, or Amy's room, and we're just asked to choose who was involved in this particular observation. Um, so we'll say that Martha, Toby, and Alistair were all involved in this particular observation here. And then what you have to be careful with is anything that are in these boxes up here, they will be copied over to the observations for these children. So obviously we're having Amy was learning to count to 10, and we don't want that to be uh, copied over to Martha, Toby and Alistair's profiles. So we've got an option here. We can either go back and edit these later and personalise them. We can generalise what's in this box and say a group of children were doing a number activity count to 10. Or we can be a little bit clever and use some smoke and mirrors. And we can use the short code that we've got up here to change this first name here. And basically, if we just follow the instructions, we replace the name in this box with this code. 
I'm, I'm just writing first name in these square brackets. And when we copy this over, it will replace the first name of each child in the sentence. So it would then say, Martha was learning to count to 10, Toby was learning to count to 10, Alistair was learning to count to 10. So hopefully you can see how much time that would save you. You're still gonna to have to probably go back and personalize observations. It's not a magic bullet. Um, remember, you still need to put effort into these observations and make sure they're well written. And, and in a lot of cases, personalized to each child. But for a general group observation, this will save you so much time. And the same obviously happens with next steps as well. You can choose whether you want a, next, a track next step to apply to every child, or if you just want it uh, to be untracked and uh, you know, a particular next step. So, so that's it as well. And we click begin, that copies everything over, and that's our observation actually completed. So I've probably taken maybe about 15 minutes there to go through creating that observation um, in great detail. Hopefully you can see that once you've done this a couple of times, you're really taking an observation in sort of three or four minutes. It's very, very quick to do. Um, if I click back on two observations here, we'll get to see what we've just done. So here we go. Amy was learning to count to 10. We've got our pictures, our observation evidence here. We can actually um, update and personalize this if we want to, but she was missing number seven. For example, and there you go. You can see that we've uh, we're in a modern browser here, and the same happens on an iPad or Android. That any spelling mistakes are highlighted for you, which is very handy in my case. The number seven. There we go, and we can just update that here. So that's taking an observation. We um, that is what your staff will do ninety five percent of the time. There is um, really. For a day-to-day -day use for a member of staff, there's very little else they will need to do apart from taking these observations. Hopefully that's very clear to you. As I said, anyone who wants to add questions in as we go along, please do so. Um, what I'm gonna show you now is the screen that everybody sees when they first log in. So I'll click on our home tab here. So when you first log in, this is the first thing you will see and it is a um, summary of everything that's happened in the nursery. So, we can see that here's the observation we just took for our child, Amy Smith here, and we copied it over to her friends. Um, if we want to, we can focus in on a particular child. So if I only want to see uh, a particular child, let's have a look at anybody, Abby. So this month we can see that Abby has only had the one observation. We can do the same for members of staff. So we can see how many observations uh, each member of staff has taken and the same for rooms as well. If we want to see only our saved for later observations or ones that have not yet been published, we can do this here. And date ranges obviously as well. So next to our observations tab, we've got notifications. <coughs> One of the big problems of uh, having paper profiling is really that lack of visibility from, for management of being able to see which child has had observations and which ones haven't. So if a child has had no observations in seven days or more, they'll appear on this list. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing that are on here. So Mark's only had no observations in seven days and that's perfectly acceptable. Maybe he's only in one day a week or two days a week and he's been off ill, whatever. But what it does, it highlights to the manager that this child has not had an observation this amount of time. When it gets like to 57 days, certainly 152 days, you then want to be going to Angela and asking her, do you know about this? Exactly, you know, all this sort of stuff. Next to notifications, we've got parent comments. And I've not really talked about it yet, but I think parent involvement is the single biggest benefit of the system. Um, allowing the parents to be able to access their children's profiles online uh, whenever they can and whenever they want to is a huge benefit. And so is allowing them to comment on these observations. Now I've got no comments here because I don't have any real parents. But uh, any existing nurseries who are in here today will attest, and uh, certainly from my own nursery, we can tell you that we have hundreds of comments received every month. Um, and it's a lovely thing for, for the staff and the management to be able to see that parents are actually um, acknowledging what you do with their children in the, um, in the daytime at the nursery, and they, that they appreciate it as well. Um, You'll get a lot of comments that are well done or thumbs up, you know, that sort of thing. But a lot of the time they will um, comment on how what you are doing is reflecting learning at home. 
and that is just fabulous evidence for when the time comes when you do get an inspection and you're asked uh, to prove that you have got a strong link between the nursery and the home. Um, parent reports we're not going to talk about this morning. We might get to that in our reports webinar, which is coming up uh, at 11 o'clock, um, and I'm going to give you more information about that in a second. And finally, we've got parent contributions. So in addition to them being able to leave a parent comment, <coughs> they can also upload their own photographs from home. So this is really allowing them almost to take their own observations from home. And you can see I've got a test one I did here for the child. Abby, if we click on view, we can see what this observation was. So, well, it's a picture of a crocodile, but Abby did was learning to ride her bike. She did very well. So you can see how um, parents might want to use this to document significant points of learning at home. Um, we've called this one Achievements from Home. Again, this is customizable. These, the parent contribution boxes are actually these blue boxes on the left hand side here. You can have as many of these as you want. You can call them whatever you want to. So we've got one called Star Moments, one called Achievements from Home. Parents are able to access them and upload photos to those as well. Uh, hopefully that all, that all makes sense to you too. Um, the practicalities of setting up your system are all very simple as well. So it's our trademark that we make things as easy as possible. So to add a child, you just click on add child. As simple as that. You then just fill in all the information here. So it's very, very simple. Day of birth. We've, at the moment we've got, um, uh, we can have markers for children with special educational needs and English as an additional language. That will feed back into reporting later on. Uh, you choose which room they're in and who their key worker is or key person uh, and you choose which curriculum they're on. So those of you in England, you'll just choose EYFS. Uh, those of you in everywhere else, you've got a big choice. And the same happens with staff and with parents as well. It's very easy to add a new member of staff and a new parent. In the parents, what you can actually do is see when they've last logged in. So you can see who's, which parents are actually engaging, which ones have never logged in. And if they've never logged in, it might be an opportunity for you to say, did you, have you checked your emails? Is there a problem that we can help with? Just to make sure that you're getting as much out of the system as you can in terms of parents engaging with it. And you can also read their comments here, see how many comments they've left. Um, I'm going to go back to child profile and talk through a couple of things now. So if we stick with Amy here. Down the left hand side, we've got a number of buttons. We've got an edit button if we want to change this child's room or any details about her. I'm not going to talk about the daily diaries, but they are basically for those of you who have smaller children, you might find them very useful. What you can do is use the daily diaries to keep track of uh, things like nappy changes, sleep times, the food that they've eaten. Um, the food that they've eaten, actually, that can go across to all children. So that, you know, that might be useful. You might want to look at that there. Each child has got a learning tracker and a next steps tracker. So um, if I click on the learning tracker here, what it does, it gives you a very visual representation of this child's experiences at the nursery. So we can see uh, using these pie charts, which parts of the curriculum they've had experience in, which parts they haven't. Uh, and um, you can maybe see where there might be particular gaps. So here we can see that Amy here has had no observations at all for religious and moral education. Um, and maybe we would expect to have a little bit more in the health and well-being section. So we can click on the assessment button here, and this will show you the different statements for this curriculum, and you can get very granular. You can go down to each individual statement, and you can see where she's had observations in this part of the curriculum. We are shown here our rate, uh, the rating that we gave this child, so we can see that we took an observation and we rated it amber you'll see that some of them say auto, and that's basically making a decision based on the observation that was taken by the practitioner. So the practitioner here went in and they said that they're amber. But time may have moved on, and you may know now that Amy is actually secure or green in this particular, activity, particular part of the curriculum. And if you want to, you can actually just manually amend this and change it to green. Uh, because really, if you think about it, in a child's time with you, you're never going to get a chance to assess a child in um, or take an observation for all areas of the curriculum. It's just it's just not possible. So if you want to, you can go and you can um, manually amend these um, ratings and change them around and move them about. You can print this out. You can show this to parents and go through this at parent consultations just to show them um, where their where their child is in the curriculum. 
Um, next to the learning tracker, we've got the next steps tracker. So if you remember earlier on, we, uh, we could have added a next step and we could have tracked it. Any track next steps appear in our active next steps tab. So this child's got two outstanding next steps and you might typically expect to have quite a few more than this for each child. Um, so we can see here that we've got uh, a next step with learn how to, to hold a pen properly and we're given the option to add a milestone. So if we see that Amy's doing something that's contributing to this, we can actually add this milestone straight from here. This observation is to teach Amy other basic first aid skills. And we can see that she's actually got a milestone in here already. Um, and what we can do is we can view this progression and we can see all the observations that have been taken here. So when the next step was first identified to teach Amy to use basic first aid skills, it's in progress. Uh, and this is what was happening here. Then we had a follow-up observation. We talked today about how whenever her hands are uh, and we can see that this is following the same next step and it's a milestone. So when this child has completed this next step, we'll have a series of observations from down the bottom here, all the way up to the top. And by the top, she'll have achieved that and we'll be able to see that progression for this particular next step. Uh, back to the child's profile. We've got uh, a button here, which is available to both staff and parents. And using this will convert your child's profile to a PDF file. So when a child leaves, you might want to advise the parents that uh, pretty soon we're gonna deactivate your child's profile, make sure you've downloaded everything that you want to and convert this profile to PDF. So the parent has always got access to creating a saved copy of this. Um, I would advise you to say to the parents that they can do this themselves. And if they want to, they can then print it out, save you having to print anything. I mean, the idea of the whole system is that you, you shouldn't really have to print anything anymore. Um, we've got our parent contribution boxes down the bottom and then a link to the gallery, which is, is really just a, uh, a collection of all the children's photos and videos and things they've been up to. So we can click on each one and we can see what actually happened here. And this is a nice thing for the children to be able to look through themselves, actually. And they can go and see all the photographs and all their friends. And, and this actually prompts a lot of conversation, a lot of comments from the children. They'll say, oh, I remember when we did this activity with this bottle and or whatever it was they were doing. So. Um, and then we take us back to our observations. Guys, that's pretty much the system. Uh, it's been a whistle-stop tour there. And as I say, this is only for the basics. Um, although, to be honest, there's not much more advanced than that that you can get to. And uh, one final thing that I want to, to talk about is cohort tracking. Uh, and I want to talk about our iOS app. So we showed you our pie chart tracker. Uh, which was for an individual child. It um, it showed you that child's progress throughout the curriculum. But uh, what you, as management, what you may want to do is see a whole group of children all at once. Uh, and you do that by using this cohort tracking button up here. So it's available on every account. It's on your children tab. Click on the cohort tracker. And what you're then asked to do is choose your filters that will build your report. So um, we were just working with Amy there, so we'll stick with the air level. Uh, it doesn't matter what room we're in, we'll have all children, and we'll just, children regardless of whether they're EAL or not. So, we build our report, and hopefully this is all going to be pretty self-explanatory to you. So we've got our curricular areas along the top here, and we can scroll along here and see them all. With uh, different curricula, this would obviously be different, so with EYFS, I'll just show you. Uh, we've only got two children here, but you see you've got your curricular areas and then you've got your age ranges down here. I'm going to switch back to the one that we've got more information for. Um, and what we can see here is <clears throat> these boxes are completed automatically based on the um, information that's input by this, the staff practitioners. And what it's very helpful in doing is highlighting trends or areas where there's either a lack of information or there's a, you know, something anomalous. So what I could maybe highlight from this is that our child Gary here, he has got next to no observations. Well, he's got none of, no observations at all. And it might be he's just joined us. But if this child's been with us a few months, again, this would highlight to uh, the staff and management that this particular child needs looked at. 
and um, we're falling behind with that one. You can also use the columns to, to see that for our planning for choices and changes here, we've got no observations. At, oh, we've got one. Uh, but here we go for organizing and writing and organizing. We've got no observations at all. This will highlight any parts of the curriculum that have not been um, tackled by any child and it will help you with your planning so that you can make sure that, that children are um, getting a good broad experience of the curriculum. Uh, obviously, the red, amber and green, that relates to the ratings for each child. Uh, but similarly with the individual ones, you can manually adjust this because you're never going to get um, a full grid here. You might not want to either. Um, if you manually adjust it, it will come up with this M here and you, all you do is you click on the box and you choose your rating. So it's, see it's gone to green with an M there because I've now said that Mark is now competent in his relationship part of the curriculum with those parts of the statements. Change it back to auto. Um, we're going to be adding more filters into this as time goes by. So at the moment, we've only got any children with additional support needs or English as, English as an additional language. We're going to allow you to customize this and add in your own. So you might want to see only funded children. How do they perform? Uh, you might want boys only or girls only and see and compare those two reports as well. There's going to be a lot of different ways that you can slice and dice the data and just manipulate it to um, show you the information that you want to see. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. That's available to everybody as well. Um, Finally, before we finish, and if anyone has got any questions, you've all been very good in listening to me here, which is really nice. If anybody has any questions, please do put them into the chat box and we'll get to them. Now, at the moment, for the next couple of weeks at least, the system is web-based only. So you're only able to access the system if you have a Wi-Fi or internet connection. I can, I can see and understand how that is frustrating to a lot of people because especially in older buildings, your Wi-Fi isn't good. It might slow things down. You've seen how fast it's worked for me. In general, that's been my experience in most schools. But there are some of you I know who do struggle with that. Well, to make things easier, we're actually developing an app which will allow you to take observations offline. I'm just going to show you a little prototype at the moment. And these are only screenshots. Um, so here we go. This is what you'll see. If you imagine you're holding your iPad, iPad in front of you. Shona, you've just asked, do you have any dates for the training session on reports? Well, actually, yes, I'm going to get to that right now. So let, before we move on to our app, um, I'm just going to post a message, a link in the box here. At 11 o'clock this morning, so in about 25 minutes, I'm going to be doing a similar session to this um, on reports. Now, I'll be recording that session and I'll be putting it on our website. But if anyone does want to come along, you can. Uh, you can do that. Um, it, it'll be, again, a very quick session, maybe half an hour at most. So click on that link there and sign up for that. So anyway, back to our app over here. The idea is that you won't need to have an internet connection. Uh, you'll be able to take observations. And when your device finds observations, you... Um, Sorry, when your device finds a connection, it will just upload all your information in the background. So you might, you can maybe do this at night time or whatever. It will do it all automatically for you in the background. It will also be much, much quicker for those of you who are struggling uh, with an internet connection. So we've kept the layout very, very similar. So we've got our rooms down here. We've had to make it a little bit more, uh, change that a little bit because of the way that um, iOS works. Uh, and Android tablets work, but it's very, very similar. So here we've got our observations, notifications, payment comments. We can click into a room to see all the children in it. We can click into an individual child and we can see all their different observations. All works exactly the same way. We add an observation, choose our curricular area, describe it. You can add a photograph at any time. Uh, and it all works very, very similar to what you're used to, but it's in a um, in an iPad app so that you'll be able to do it much, much quicker. Uh, I've got a couple of questions coming in here. I'm going to leave the, the iPad app because you can hopefully all understand what that's going to be like. But that'll be coming in May. Um, it'll be free to everybody and you'll just be able to download it from the iOS store and the Google Play store. We've had a request from Hazel to go over the tracking again. So... Um, I'm assuming, Hazel, you might be meaning the 
uh, cohort tracking, is that correct? So to get to that, we just go to our child tab and we click on the cohort tracking. We are asked to choose our filters here and we do that from here. Click on submit and that builds our report automatically for us. Uh, we've also had a question from Laika. Um, we can, I said we can add funded children along with the SENEO. We can't do that at the moment. That's something we're working on, Laika, sorry. So that will be a feature that will be coming in the next few weeks where you just can create your own filters. So you'll be able to say, I want to only, I want to be able to um, select single this child out so that they've got their funded child or whatever. So that will be coming soon. It's coming in the next few weeks, but what it will be is just an extra box, like one of these ones here that you can choose to filter the children by. Um, so, um, we're showing the children's information. So each child has got a, a little line down the left hand side and the curriculum is along up the top here. This is all built automatically with the observations that are created by the staff uh, and input into the children's profiles. So Alistair here has had several observations that have led him to be rated as amber in activity and sport. But if you want to, you can override that and you can say that he's actually not amber, I think he's actually red or he's actually green. And you can do it that way. Um, Karen's asked a little question there. Um, the, yeah, Karen, the app will be available on all tablets um, for Android and iOS. So iPads and any Android tablets. Um, I would assume that the vast majority of you have those. So they need to be running the Android system and the uh, iOS system on iPads. Oh, apologies, Hazel, you were referring to next steps, not tracking. So um, we'll go back into next steps here. And I'll come back into Amy. So when you add an observation, you're asked if you want to add a next step and track it. Any next step that you track here will appear for all observations at the end. I'm just going to zip through here. Just add in any outcome and experience and get through to our final stage. So when we get to the final stage, any next step that has been tracked will appear down the side here. Um, so we can see that we've got two outstanding next steps, learn how to hold a pen properly and to teach Amy other basic first aid skills. What the system is asking us is, does this observation, does it complete or, or contribute to any of these next steps? So currently we're saying this observation does not complete any next steps or contribute to them. But we can say actually it does contribute to this learning how to hold a pen properly. We can say it also contributes towards our learning basic first aid skills. We can you can add as many next steps or link as many next steps to this particular observation as you want to. If we've decided that this next step, this observation is demonstrating that Amy has achieved this next step of learning how to of learning basic first aid skills, we would then check this box to say that that next step has completed. And what this would do, it would remove this next step from the outstanding next step list for every subsequent observation. I'm not gonna do it on this one. Um, so when a next step has been attached here, it will then go into the child's next step tracker. So we've got our outstanding next steps of learn how to hold a pen properly to teach and to teach Amy other basic first aid skills. Any uh, next step that has any milestones will be displayed here. So we can see that we've got one observation that's been contributed towards her other basic first aid skills learning. And we can then view the progression of those next steps. Achieved next steps are in this tab here. Now, there would normally be information in these columns here, but because this is a test child, I've ended up deleting information. So this would show you the progression for all your 
um, next steps that you've achieved. And what I'd suggest maybe that you do with this is maybe create a test child and play around with it and just to, just to get yourself used to it and see how it works. Add some next steps, add some milestones, um, achieve them, and then you can create and print out this achievement report um, and see how this would work for your nursery. Um, okay, guys, I'm gonna leave it there because as I say, we've got this uh, reports webinar scheduled for um, later on this, after this morning in about 20 minutes. If you do want to get to that, uh, there's the link. I've just posted the link in there again for you. You can sign up for that there. This, uh, this session's been recorded and I will um, post it on our website and I'll send an email around with a link to that as well. If anyone's got any questions at all, you can always email me info at learningjournals.co.uk and I've been very remiss in forgetting, for those of you who have not used the system yet, um, you can go to our website, which is learningjournals.co.uk, click on free trial, fill out this form, and we will get that um, trial account set up to you. It's completely free, it says 30 days, we're a bit flexible on that, so if you need a bit longer, that's not a problem. Um, try it out as much as you want in your nursery and uh, see if it's going to work for you, which I think it will, but I would say that. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Um, any questions, it's info at learningjournals.co.uk. And I'll see, I'm sure, some of you uh, in about 20 minutes for our report webinar. Thanks very much.